Hello, this is AJ again. Welcome to our next lesson. This one's a really interesting one from one of my favorite writers. Absolutely love him. His name is Alan Watts. Um, he actually died uh, back in the 70s, but just an amazing man. Uh, of so intelligent and, and also quite funny, actually. Just a great sense of humor. Um, and Alan Watts is a very interesting guy. He was one of the first... Uh, Western people, meaning uh, American or European, uh, to learn about Eastern spiritual practices, Eastern religions. So he studied uh, Buddhism, uh, Taoism, and uh, Hinduism, most especially Buddhism. He was a Buddhist. He became a Buddhist. And then he uh, he came back, for example, he lived in Japan, actually, uh, for several years and uh, s learned Buddhism there in a, in a monastery. And then he came back and then he wrote in English about these religions. The other interesting thing about him is that he was a Christian minister before he became a Buddhist. I believe he was Episcopalian, which is a kind of Christian, but he was a minister. He was a preacher. Um, and so the very interesting thing about Alan Watts is that he has a great understanding of both the Western and the Eastern uh, religious practices, religious beliefs, and not just the normal kind of uh, religion, you know, just go to church and pray and read your little book, but really the deeper meanings of both Christianity, Buddhism, etc. And he has a great way of teaching Eastern religions, especially Buddhism and Taoism, to Western people in a way we can understand. So anyway, uh, and he's also just a really funny, interesting guy and a, a very intellectual guy, very intelligent. So this is from one of his books about Taoism. Now, Taoism is actually spelled with a T, T-A-O-I-S-M, but it's pronounced Taoism like it's a D. Why is that? Because English spelling is crazy. English spelling, as you already know, is very difficult and there's no logic about it or very little logic about it. So it's spelled with a T but pronounced as a D. I don't know why. Why didn't we just spell it with a D? I don't know. It comes from, you know, Chinese uh, words. So I guess they, they wrote it. They heard it wrong. And I don't know. Anyway, it's pronounced Taoism. And the book is called Taoism, Way Beyond Seeking. Taoism, Way Beyond Seeking by Alan Watts, A-L-A-N, and then his last name, W-A-T-T-S. And by the way, he has a great podcast, alanwatts.com, I believe, is his podcast. So in this book, Alan Watts talks about Taoism. Taoism is a uh, philosophy, uh, not really a religion, I don't think. Uh, you know, maybe it is, I don't know. But uh, in my opinion, it's really more of a philosophy. It's a way of living. It's a philosophy about life. And it's a very natural philosophy. The basic idea of Taoism is that you should live in harmony with nature. You should follow nature, be part of nature. And if you live with nature instead of fighting it, your life will be much more successful and happy and easy. It's a little bit like Thoreau's idea. Remember Thoreau, Walden, remember that lesson? Well, Taoism has a, a similar kind of feeling. This idea that we don't fight against things. We go with them. We do what is natural. So effortless English, in many ways, is a, is a uh, Taoist kind of uh, English program. Because we're trying to go with your natural brain, right? You're trying to learn in, a, in the most natural way. We're not fighting against our brains. We're going with the brain. The brain loves stories, so we use stories to teach English. The brain learns grammar best from patterns and stories, not from rules. So we use patterns and stories to teach grammar. You learn vocabulary best and fastest from stories and from reading interesting articles and books. So that's what we use in our system. 
So this is the idea. You're not fighting against something with effort, trying, trying, trying. You're doing what is most natural. When you do what is most natural, it's easier and it's more successful. Wow, two great things at the same time. All right. So now this section from his book talks about the subconscious. Remember, we've had this word before. It's the part of your brain that is working all the time, but you don't know. It's the part of your intelligence, your brain, that makes your heart beat. Boom, 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 boom. Right? You don't have to think about it. You don't tell your heart to beat. Beat now, beat now, beat now. Right? It's automatic. Your brain is making that happen subconsciously. Now, you can breathe, for example, consciously or subconsciously. Usually, when you're doing something, you're not thinking about breathing, but you still continue to breathe, right? You're always breathing. You can also think about it, right? You can consciously think about breathing. You can decide, breathe in, breathe out. That's conscious breathing. Subconscious breathing or unconscious breathing, it just happens automatically. You're doing something else, you're not thinking about it, but it still happens. Your brain is still working. So that kind of intelligence, that unconscious, that subconscious intelligence is the most powerful. That's most of our intelligence. Thinking about things with words or consciously thinking, it's very limited. We can only do a little bit with that. We think that's so great, and that's what we always focus on. And our schools are always about conscious, conscious, conscious learning. We analyze. We think about the little parts of things, the little pieces of grammar, the individual vocabulary words. But that's not how the brain works best. So let me read this part from Alan Watts now. Here we go. Now, if you want to find an intelligent solution to a problem, your brain can do the work. You have all the necessary intelligence inside of your skull. However, most people never use their brains. They use their conscious minds instead. And they use their conscious minds the same way they use their muscles. You can strain your head just as if it were a muscle. You can work very hard trying to find a solution. But it doesn't really work well that way. When you really want to find an answer to something, what you need to do is contemplate the problem calmly. Visualize your question and then simply wait. If you don't do this, if instead you try to find the solution through brute mental strength, you may be disappointed because any solution that comes in that way is likely to be wrong. But when you have waited for a while, the solution will come by itself automatically. That is how to use your brain. And it will work for you in the same way that your stomach will digest your food for you. Without you having to supervise it consciously. Our attempts to supervise everything consciously have led to consequences that are not good for our stomach. And the reason is quite simple. Conscious attention, which uses and employs words, cannot think of very much. Therefore, we are forced to ignore almost everything else while we are thinking consciously. We think along a single track, but the real world doesn't proceed along a single track. The real world is everything happening all together, everywhere, at the same time. And you just can't take all of that into consideration. Because there isn't time. 
However, your brain, your subconscious brain, can take it all into consideration because it is capable of handling innumerable variables at once. Even though your conscious attention cannot, words are not capable of handling any more than a single, very crude and simple track. And that is why we have to trust our brains. We are much more intelligent than we realize. Okay, well, a little bit of a long section there. And what's the basic meaning of this? He's basically saying that your subconscious, the part that you're not aware about, the part that does not use words, the part of your brain that doesn't use words, that you, it's much more intelligent. And I think we've all had this experience, right? You have this problem, this problem, and you're thinking, and you're thinking, and you're worried, and all this stress. You're trying to solve the problem, but you, you can't quite solve the problem. And then finally, ugh, you're so tired, you just stop. You go to bed or you, you go watch a movie or something. And then, when you're not thinking about it, suddenly, boom, a solution, a great solution. Right? Your brain, your subconscious brain is thinking about it then. Finally, you let your subconscious brain work and it gives you the answer. It gives you a fantastic answer. So that's just one small example. The point is, you must let your subconscious brain do its job. You have to trust it. It's far more intelligent than your conscious brain is. Now, of course, I, as I was saying already, this is key to learning English. It's key to the effortless English system. This is the foundation. This is the, the most important idea that we use with Effortless English. We are teaching you English with your subconscious brain. We are teaching to your subconscious brain. If you start thinking about it, if you try to study grammar rules, for example, you're going to destroy what I'm doing. You're going to destroy your subconscious brain. You're going to turn it off. You're going to block it. By thinking, 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 and studying all these grammar rules, your grammar will not improve quickly. So you must use our system. That's why I'm always telling you, don't study grammar, don't study grammar. Because we design the system, I design the system, to teach your subconscious brain. If you trust me, if you use the system exactly as I tell you, you will succeed very quickly. You'll be surprised. But you must do it. If you try to use my system and also study grammar, well, it's not going to work very well. You're going to learn more slowly. If you try to use my system and also try to memorize single individual vocabulary words using a vocabulary textbook, you're going to hurt my system and you're going to learn more slowly. If you try to use textbooks or normal classes, normal English classes, and do my system at the same time, you can do that. It's your choice, but you will learn more slowly. So please follow my system completely, 100%. Just, just try it for six months. You do all of these lessons. After, you can do something else if you want. It's your choice. But I don't think you will because you'll see the result. But you must use the system exactly as I tell you. One lesson set for one complete week. Only listening. Don't try to memorize. Don't try to think about the rules or why this or why that. Don't think about that. Just listen and enjoy. Listen and enjoy. Listen a lot. Listen a lot. Enjoy. Smile. And in the mini stories, answer the questions quickly. That's all you need to do. If you do that, then you're going to start doing what Alan Watts has described. Your subconscious brain will just start to remember English. 
You'll remember the vocabulary words. You'll start speaking. It comes out. You won't try. You will naturally start to speak more correctly, more quickly. Your pronunciation will naturally improve. You'll understand more English faster and faster without trying. So it's the Taoism approach to learning English. All right, I will see you next for the vocabulary. Bye bye. Hello, this is AJ. Welcome to the mini story for Taoism. There was a girl, a very happy girl, a very beautiful girl. An amazing girl. She had a big smile. There was an amazing, beautiful, intelligent, wonderful girl. Her name was Tomoe, and she wanted to fight a gorilla. What was her name? Her name was Tomoe. She was Japanese. What did Tomoe want to do? Tomoe wanted to fight a gorilla. What did she want to fight? A gorilla. Tomoe wanted to fight a gorilla. So, first she contemplated her goal. What did she do? She contemplated her goal. She thought about her goal calmly and slowly. What did she contemplate? Her goal. She contemplated her goal. What was her goal? Her goal was to fight a gorilla. Did she want to be nice to a gorilla? Oh no, not Tomoe. Tomoe wanted to fight a gorilla. Tomoe was a very sweet, nice, beautiful person, but she wanted to fight a gorilla. She contemplated her goal. Who contemplated fighting a gorilla? Tomoe. Tomoe thought about fighting a gorilla very calmly, very slowly. She contemplated fighting a gorilla. What did she contemplate fighting? A gorilla. Tomoe contemplated fighting a gorilla. When she contemplated fighting a gorilla, she realized. That gorillas have a lot of brute strength. What kind of strength do gorillas have? Very careful, subtle strength, or super strong animal brute strength? Well, they have brute strength. Gorillas have brute strength. Did Tomoe have brute strength? No, she didn't. She didn't have brute strength. She was a small Japanese girl. So, who had brute strength? Well, actually, who has brute strength? All gorillas, all adult gorillas, have brute strength. Animal, super strong strength. Gorillas have brute strength. So she contemplated. She realized gorillas have brute strength. She realized, wow, gorillas are gonna be hard to fight. It's gonna be hard to fight a gorilla. 
Would it be easy or hard to fight a gorilla? It would be hard for Tomoe to fight a gorilla. Why would it be hard for her to fight a gorilla? Well, it would be hard for her to fight a gorilla because gorillas have brute strength. They have brute strength. So it would be very, very hard for her to fight a gorilla. She realized this. She understood. So, of course, she decided to go to the gym. She needed to become strong. She went to the gym. Every day, she strained uh, to lift weights. Was she relaxed when she lifted weights? No, she was not relaxed. She tried very hard. She strained. Uh, one. Uh, two. Uh, three. Every day she strained her muscles. Every day she strained hard to lift weights. What did she strain to do? She strained to lift weights. She tried very hard to lift weights. Who strained when she lifted weights? Tomoe. Tomoe strained when she lifted weights. How often did she strain when she lifted weights? Well, every day, actually. Every day she went to the gym. Every day she strained and strained to lift weights. She got stronger and stronger. And stronger. Finally, she was ready. She proceeded with her plan. Did she continue or did she stop? She continued. She continued to follow her plan. She proceeded. To follow her plan. What did she proceed to do? She proceeded to follow her plan. Who proceeded to follow her plan? Tomoe. Tomoe proceeded to follow her plan. And what was her plan? Her plan was to fight a gorilla. Her plan was to fight a gorilla, and she proceeded with her plan. She continued with her plan. She flew to Africa. Where did she fly to? To Africa. She flew to Africa. In Africa, she saw. A gorilla. She saw a huge, big, strong gorilla. Tomoe was ready to fight. What did Tomoe see? She saw a huge, strong, brute gorilla. But there was a problem. The gorilla had a baby. A baby gorilla. It was a big, strong gorilla mom. With a little, tiny, cute gorilla baby. <gasps> Tomoe stopped. She visualized fighting the gorilla. And then she visualized the poor baby gorilla crying. Oh, my mommy's fighting. 
Did she imagine the gorilla baby crying? Yes, Tomoe visualized. She saw, she imagined the little baby gorilla crying if she fought the big gorilla mom. What did Tomoe visualize? She visualized the baby gorilla crying. Did she imagine, did she visualize the big gorilla crying or the baby gorilla crying? She visualized the baby gorilla crying. Oh no. Who visualized the little baby gorilla crying? Tomoe. Tomoe visualized the baby gorilla crying. Who did she visualize crying? Or whom? She visualized the baby gorilla crying. And so Tomoe took this into consideration. Did Tomoe think about the baby? Yes, she took the baby into consideration. She thought about the baby. She took the baby into consideration. She thought about the baby. What did Tomoe take into consideration? The baby gorilla. Tomoe took the baby gorilla into consideration. She thought about it. Who took the baby gorilla into consideration? Tomoe! Tomoe took the baby gorilla into consideration. She thought about the poor little baby gorilla. Tomoe wanted to fight the big one, but she took the baby into consideration. Tomoe decided not to fight the gorilla. Instead, Tomoe decided to play basketball with the gorillas. Because she brought a basketball, of course. Tomoe always brings a basketball every time she travels. Everywhere she goes, Tomoe brings a basketball. Obviously. So Tomoe decided not to fight. Instead, she played basketball with the gorilla and the baby. Everyone was happy. And that is the end of our mini story this time. I hope you're smiling. I hope you're standing strong. <sighs> Deep breath. If you're not, do it now. Move your body. Get strong. Get some energy. See you next time. Bye bye. Hi, this is AJ. Welcome to the point of view stories for Taoism. Same story, but this time we start with since last year. Since last year, Tomoe has wanted to fight a gorilla. She has wanted to fight a gorilla starting last year until recently. Tomoe has wanted to fight a gorilla since last year. In fact, every day since last year, she has contemplated her goal. Starting last year, she started to contemplate. And then every day, she has contemplated her goal. Every day since last year. What has she contemplated? She has contemplated her goal. Her goal of fighting a gorilla. 
because she has wanted to fight a gorilla, you know, for for one year since last year. But of course, every time she has contemplated fighting a gorilla, she has realized that gorillas have brute strength. She has realized every time that they are hard to fight. And so, every day since last year, she has gone to the gym. Every day since last year, she has gone to the gym. And she has strained to lift weights. She's tried very hard to lift weights. Every day, she has strained to lift weights. Every day, she has worked out, exercised. Every day, she has gotten stronger and stronger and stronger since last year. So, she has wanted to fight a gorilla. She has contemplated fighting a gorilla. She has gone to the gym. She has exercised. She has strained to lift weights every day since last year. Until finally, she was ready. One day she said, I'm ready. I will proceed with my plan. And she did. She proceeded with her plan. She flew to Africa. In Africa, she saw a big, strong, huge gorilla. But there was a problem. The gorilla had such a cute little baby. Oh, no. Tomoe visualized the baby crying. She imagined the baby crying. And so Tomoe took the baby into consideration. She thought about the baby. And Tomoe decided not to fight the gorilla. Instead, she played basketball with the gorilla and the gorilla baby. And everybody was very happy. Okay, that's all. That's the end of our first mini-story. Again, you probably noticed there was a change in there. Actually, a couple little changes. You may have noticed that. Don't worry about that. Just listen. Listen and understand. That's all you need to do. Do not think about Do not analyze. Just listen. Understand the meaning, the general meaning. That's all you need to do. Next one, into the future. So, next year, there will be this girl, Tomoe, who will want to fight a gorilla. She's gonna want to fight a gorilla. Well, first, she's going to contemplate her goal. She'll think about it calmly, quietly. She'll contemplate her goal of fighting the gorilla. And she'll realize something. She'll realize that gorillas have brute strength. Gorillas are not weak. They have brute strength. She'll realize this. She'll realize gorillas are very hard to fight. And so, Tomoe is going to go to the gym every day to get stronger. She'll strain hard to lift weights. She'll strain and she'll strain every day, lifting weights, getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Finally, one day, she'll be ready. She will proceed with her plan. She'll fly to Africa. But when she gets to Africa, she'll have a problem. Yes, she's going to see a huge, big, strong gorilla. But the gorilla will have a cute little baby. Tomoe will visualize the little baby crying. She'll imagine the baby crying. Tomoe will take the baby into consideration. She's going to think about the baby. 
And she'll decide not to fight the gorilla. So, of course, obviously, she'll decide instead to play basketball with the gorilla and the baby. And everybody will be very, very happy. That is the end of the point of view stories for Taoism. Listen to this every day. Listen to the mini story every day. Listen to the main audio every day for one week at least. More is fine, but at least one week. And always, every time you are listening to English, you have to have a peak emotional state. So you got to jump. You got to smile. You got to move your body, shoulders back. Breathe. Feel great. Strong, positive emotions. Connect them to English. You'll learn much, much faster. See you next time. Bye-bye. Hi, this is AJ. Welcome to the vocabulary lesson for Taoism. Let's get started. Our first word is skull. Skull. Alan Watts said, You have all the necessary intelligence you need inside of your skull. Now, your skull is your head bone, right? It's the bone that protects your brain. We call that the skull, your skull. So again, skull is simply head bone. Next is the word strain. He said, you can strain your head just like you can strain a muscle. To strain means to try very hard, to work very, very hard. A lot of effort. Sometimes it has the idea of working too hard, trying hard too hard, too much. It sometimes has this idea of too much. So if you strain your muscle, right, you, you, you work your muscle too much. Maybe you're lifting something. It's a little too heavy. If you strain your mind, strain your brain, it means you're thinking too hard. So it's trying very, very hard to strain, to strain. One more time, strain. Okay, our next word is contemplate. Contemplate. Alan says you need to contemplate your problems. Don't think about them. Don't strain. Just contemplate your problems. Now, to contemplate means to calm your mind. It means to have a calm mind, calm brain. Very relaxed. It's the opposite of straining your head. Straining your mind. Straining is trying hard. Contemplating is relaxing and thinking calmly. So it's thinking very slowly, thinking very calmly. Or maybe not thinking at all, just a calm, quiet mind. So to contemplate means to make your mind calm. Or to think very calmly and slowly. To contemplate. Contemplate a problem. Think very calmly and slowly about the problem. Our next word is visualize. To visualize. To visualize means to imagine. So he says, imagine your question. Visualize your question. Then simply wait. So he's saying, just, just have a question, your question about your problem. Just visualize it. Just uh, think about it in a simple way. Just imagine it. Imagine the question only. Don't think about the solution. Just visualize, just imagine the question, and then just wait. So to visualize means to imagine. Next is the word brute. He says, if you try to solve your problem with brute mental strength, you may be disappointed. Brute mental strength. Of course, mental means mind or brain. 
So brute strength means uh, like animal, animal like. Brute means very strong and similar to an animal. So brute strength means like strength like an animal, very, very strong. It's the opposite of subtle, if you know the word subtle. It's the opposite of careful strength. Brute strength just means super strong and ah, like an animal. Ah. So I'm saying if you try to use brute strength, just you try to use a lot of strength, very strong strength with your mind in this case, you'll be disappointed. Our next word is supervise, to supervise. So he says, your stomach will digest your food and you don't need to supervise it. You don't need to supervise your stomach. You don't need to supervise your heart. Your heart will beat, boom, 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 boom. Automatically, you don't need to watch it and think about it all the time. So to supervise means to watch to watch, usually to watch somebody or something, some action happening. So to supervise. So to supervise your heart means to, to watch your heart and think about it all the time. Watch it carefully. It really means this idea of watching carefully. Our next word is employ. He says, conscious attention, conscious thinking employs words. It employs words. To employ means to use. It's very simple. To employ means to use. So conscious thinking uses words mostly. Conscious thinking employs words. So to employ something means to use it. To employ words means to use words. Our next phrase, a single track. Your conscious mind can only think along a single track. A single track means a single way, just one way. It means one thing and then another thing and then another thing, right? Kind of in a line, in a line. So a single track has this idea of in a single line. You have one thought, then the next thought, then the next thought. One after the other, after the other, after the other. One by one, one by one. So a single track has this idea of one by one, a limited way, a single way, one way. So your conscious mind only thinks about one thing at a time, one by one. Your subconscious mind can think about many things at the same time. That's the difference. Our next word is proceed. Proceed. He's saying the world doesn't proceed along a single track. To proceed means to continue or to happen. So to proceed means to continue. To proceed, to continue. To continue or to happen. So the world doesn't happen one by one. Right? Everything's happening at the same time. Many, 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 many things all happening at the same time. Not a single track. Not one by one. It's not proceeding. It's not going. It's not continuing one by one. So to proceed means to continue, to keep going, to keep happening. Our next phrase is take into consideration. This is a common phrase. We do use it a lot. He says, your conscious brain cannot take into consideration everything that's happening. It cannot take into consideration everything that is happening in the world. Take into consideration means think about. To take something into consideration means to think about something, to think about it. Take it into consideration means think about it. Your brain cannot think about everything consciously, but it can subconsciously take 
almost everything into consideration. You can think about almost everything at the same time, at least many, many, many things. So take into consideration means to think about. Our next word is innumerable. Innumerable. There are innumerable things happening in the world at the same time. Innumerable means uncountable. Too many to count. It means there's too many things to count. It's the, too many. You can't count them. It's so big. So uncountable. Not possible to count because too many. Innumerable. There are innumerable things happening. There are too many things happening in the world. You can't count them all, right? There's too many. It's too fast. In fact, he says there are innumerable variables in the world. So too many variables to count. Too many variables. A variable is a choice or a possibility or a potential. So choices, really. There are innumerable choices. There are too many choices in the world. There are too many possibilities, too many variables. Variables means choices or possibilities. Variables, choices or possibilities. Just two more words. Our next word, to handle. It's a verb, to handle. Your, your brain can handle innumerable things at the same time if you use your subconscious. So to handle means to manage, to take care of, to use. I like this idea of manage. Your brain can handle a lot of things, but your conscious brain, words, for example, cannot handle more than one thing at a time. Your brain can only handle things one by one if you use words. When we speak, we use one word, and then another word, and then another word, one by one, a single track, right? So our conscious brains, using language, can only understand, can only handle things one by one. We can only handle words one by one. So handle is to manage, to manage, or to take care of and use, to take care of and use, to manage, that's handle, to handle, the verb. And finally, our last word is crude. Words are very crude. They are very crude. They can only be understood one by one. Crude means very simple and primitive. So crude means simple and primitive. Simple and primitive. Simple and primitive, that's crude, crude. So he's saying our conscious minds are very crude. Our conscious minds, which use language, which use words, they're very crude, they're very simple, they're very primitive. Conscious thinking is very crude. The subconscious is more advanced, more intelligent. The conscious mind is crude, it's simple and it's primitive. All right, that's it. That's the end of the vocabulary for Taoism. See you for the mini story. Bye-bye.